<laughs> All right, why don't we get started now? Uh, I think I think this yeah. microphone is dead, right? This, is this mic? Is it on? Is it working? I can't. It's just me, right? No mic. Oh well, I'll just try to project my voice the best that I can. Um, hi, good to see all of you. Uh, it's Friday. It's week four. We are still talking about recursion and backtracking today. And uh, where are we? We are here. This Friday, right here. Um, just more backtracking problems. After today's lecture, you could go take a look at homework four, which is up on the website right now. It's a collection of problems that focus on backtracking. Um, just to see where we're headed, just take a look at the calendar. Next week we're going to learn about something called linked lists, uh, which involves another topic called pointers. Is that a bug on the projector? It's, a bug, yeah. it's the first case of me having a bug in my lecture, huh? <laughs> 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 All right. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, Carl. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, next week, pointers and linked lists, and then uh, we're going to have a midterm week after next on uh, Thursday evening. Make sure you have that on your calendar. Make sure to check your, your schedules and your calendar for that. Uh, I will be posting some practice exam problems soon, maybe this weekend, maybe early next week, uh, that you can look at so you can have more idea what to expect on the test. But my suggestion to you, homework four is going to be due not a week from today, but uh, the following Monday, so you have slightly more time. My suggestion would be to just pretend that it was due here and just try to get it done as soon as you can, because then you'll have the more days to just focus on the test. Um, I think that the more time you set aside to study, the more likely you'll rock the exam. So uh, I'll give you a whole bunch of practice problems that will be very similar to the real test problems. And if you just go do a bunch of them or look at a bunch of them, you're very likely to succeed on the real test, which will be very similar to those practice problems, OK? Um, so I'll talk more about the test later on, but that's my general advice for you going forward. Now, uh, last time we ended lecture, we were working on a problem called sublists, where we were supposed to print all the subsets of a vector. And we very, came very close to finishing it, but we didn't. And I just stopped. I let us go with a bug in our program. So I want to revisit. I want to fix the bug. Just take a minute. Um, uh, if I run this file, uh, it shows me this output, which is it's not the right output. It's missing a lot of lines. So I mean, look, I could just we just talk about what the fix is or what the bug is or whatever. But I also want to talk about a process, because I think a lot of you are going to go write recursive code or backtracking code. It's, it might be wrong at first. What do you do? How do you fix it, right? So you have to have a process. Um, I think the, the first thing you could do is you could just go look at the code and see if you see the bug, obviously. But I think this relies on you having eagle eyes and just seeing, aha, there it is. You know? And a lot of times, that works if the nature of the bug is that you have some line of code with a mistake in it and you have to change the mistake. But it's harder to notice, oh, I'm missing something I should have. You know, it's harder to notice the lack of a thing. So I don't think just staring at the code until you see the bug is always going to work. So um, in terms of just concrete advice for looking for bugs, the thing that I've been doing over and over is at the start of the recursion here, I insert some sort of print statement where I print the call, I print the parameters, I would print what the value of V is, what the value of chosen is. And I think if you look at that chain of those calls, perhaps with that indentation in the front of it, I think you start to see like, wait, that's not the set of calls I was expecting. Why would that be? So that starts to lead you to a process of where the bug really is. Um, now, in this particular case, let me remind you what we were doing. We talked about how backtracking problems have a decision tree. You choose to go one way versus another way. And the decisions we decided for this subsetting problem were about, for, the, for a given element, do I want to include it in what's chosen, or do I want to exclude it from what's chosen? So we sort of had two cases. Let's add them to chosen and then recur, or let's remove them from chosen and then recur again without them. So it's two. Each one has two subcalls, OK? Um, and that's kind of where we ended up. Looks pretty good. Now, <laughs> do you know what's missing? I mean, what's the problem here? Uh, in fact, I think you might see it if you just remember back to the sort of template for how we might uh, describe backtracking problems. What part of that template is missing? Yes? Unchoose. Unchoose. So you're supposed to choose, explore, unchoose, right? So look at this code. I chose that I'm handling element 0. And then I explored both of the things I could do with element 0. I could include him or I could exclude him. And then I'm just done. 
I choose an explore. Oops, I didn't backtrack. Well, I mean, the recursion calls come back, but I didn't undo. I think a good heuristic here is like, when you do backtracking, any sort of changes that your call makes, you should probably check to make sure that you undo those changes by the time your call exits. So that's a good rule of thumb. So here I took element zero out of the vector, right? I never put him back. So what I need to do is down here at the end, I need to say unchoose, and I need to say v.insert at index zero the value first, the value that I pulled out of there in the first place, okay? And now with that change, I'm gonna get all the subsets that I wanted to get, okay? So any questions about, about that problem? Really, I just want you to forgive me for not solving it at the end of Wednesday's class. As long as we're cool, I'll move on. I just don't want you to think less of me. Um, okay, so in general, we're just going to do more problems today, more examples of problems. I think the problems today will especially help you for some of the homework problems. So let's talk about a particular one called the eight queens problem, or more generally the n queens problem for a board, a chess board of size n by n, the default being eight by eight, which is what a real chess board is. Uh, the idea is, can you place eight queens on the board or n queens on the board in a configuration where none of the queens are able to attack each other? So if you don't play chess, I mean the queen can move in the eight directions, uh, up, down, left, right, and diagonal. I don't know why that turned white, but a queen can move in those directions in exact 45 degree increments, right? So like this configuration, I believe, is a valid solution. But if this queen were here, then that would not work because these two would be able to attack each other, right? So how do I find such a configuration? If I give you some kind of grid or chessboard or something and I ask you to try to place all the queens on it, this does seem like a problem that you would want to go exploring all the possible solutions. It feels like an exhaustive search problem. Um, but you could imagine that if you try putting some of the queens in some of the places, that would be a bad placement because they could attack each other, so maybe we would want to backtrack out of those paths. So this is a backtracking problem. We're not going to print every configuration. We're going to print the good configurations, right? Okay, well, with any backtracking problem, if we're going to formulate it as like, try all the choices, you know, choose, explore, unchoose, what is a choice? What is the unit of work that each call is going to do here? What do you think? Place one queen. That seems like a fairly concrete action, right? So there's going to be like a total of maybe eight recursive calls at most at a time. Okay, so if my choice is where to place one queen, now the next thing we need to do is think about all of the options for that choice. I guess sometimes we talk about decision versus choice. My decision is that I'm going to place a queen, but the, the choices are where do I place that queen? So there's eight by eight squares on the board. So I guess what I could do is like for each square, I could choose putting a queen there and then I could explore and then I could unchoose, right? So that's what I would describe as the naive algorithm. Um, for each square, put a queen there, try to place the rest of the queens, that's probably recursion, right? And then, oops, if, I, if that doesn't please me, then I will unplace the queen there, right? So. Sometimes we talk about big O or runtime or whatever, like how long does that take? How many different solutions will it have to try? Well, I mean there's 64 squares for this queen and then each of those squares, I have to start a tree of calls where the next one has 63. So it's just messy, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to get myself in trouble abusing combinatorics again, but like, <laughs> I, I, I want to convince you that there would be quite a lot of different paths we would have to examine here, right? And I'm not going to take the time to write the code this way and run it because we just won't even see the code finish in a reasonable amount of time. So I don't want this to be our algorithm. I think we need to come up with something slightly more clever than this. And maybe what we need to do is we need to back up and look at, so I, I posted a solution. It's not so much that I can't think of a solution. Here's one. But um, here is a solution. Maybe by looking at some of the qualities that that solution has, maybe we could infer some optimizations that we could make to our algorithm. Are there any th properties of this board that you think we could take advantage of in our, in our code? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we can only place one queen at each row column, so we can just, you know, traverse through like, each column, just place one. 
Sure. Uh, a, a quality that this solution has, and I'm pretty positive, a quality that every valid solution will have, is every row has exactly one queen in it. Because there couldn't be two because they'd be able to attack each other, right? And every column also has only one queen in it. So in terms of limiting down the solution space, the moment we try to place a queen, we can reduce some things about where the other ones would, would go, right? But what you can say, yeah. Um, there's four queens on black squares and four queens on white squares. Mm. That's interesting. There's the same number of queens on black as on white. Yeah, I think there's a lot of little optimizations that you can make to this, or a lot of nice observations you can make about these solutions. Um, I want to show how powerful it is just to even make one of those optimizations. Like, let's just do kind of a simple version of, of the first suggestion, which is like each column has exactly one queen in it. So in terms of like the work that's done by each recursive call, let's say that call number one is going to decide where to put this queen. But it's going to put her somewhere in this column. And call number two is going to handle this queen. It's going to put her somewhere in this column. So now instead of each call having 64 or 63 or 62 options, each call has at most eight options. That'll at least cut things down a lot in our combinatoric call tree explosion here, right? So instead of this algorithm, maybe something more like this, where each call handles a column. You could do the same thing with a row. You could also do more where you're thinking about both rows and columns and, and excluding, you know, there's more you could do, sure. But now the solution space is a lot smaller. It's more like eight, you know, a factor of eight for each call than 64. Okay, so if we were actually gonna code this, um, I will provide you some helper code to, to help with some of the parts that are not very recursive here. So I've got a class I brought in that's called board, just kind of like a grid, it's just rows and columns. And you can construct a board of a given size, you know, if you pass eight, it'll make an eight by eight board. You can ask if it would be okay to put a queen at a given spot. So it'll check all the existing queens and see if they can attack each other. You can also put a queen there or take away a queen or you can print the board, okay? So if, that's, if we have that, let's try to figure out how to, how to solve it. Um, I've got Cute Creator here. I'm gonna rename my main, uh, and I'm gonna open this other file called Eight Queens. And here, it's like, hang on, let me, uh, so, so there's solve queens is what we're gonna write. It takes a board reference as a parameter, and they just make a board of size eight or whatever, and we say solve queens. So now we need to write solve queens. Okay, help me start. We're doing recursion, we're doing backtracking, we're gonna have to think about base cases, we're gonna have to think about choose, explore, unchoose, have to think about passing parameters between calls. Are there any so, sort of uh, things that you would do first to get started here? I mean, we just described kind of generally what the algorithm should be, so. Yes? Create helper method um, and have one that be an int representing the column. Okay, great. Let's make a helper method. I think in a lot of these backtracking problems, we're going to need a helper because we talked about how each call handles a column and we won't know which column to handle unless we are told that somehow, right? So we're going to need that to be information that each call is able to be receiving and how calls receive information is through parameters. So yeah, let's write a helper that says place a queen in this column. Okay, so let's do void solve helper that takes the same board and takes an int column or call. Great, and so I think the idea would be like, if you call solve helper, you're gonna start out by calling it on column one, and then that call's gonna call it on column two, and that call's gonna call it on column three, and so forth, right? We start from the left, go to the right, and I think it's important to think about assumptions for a minute. Like if I'm doing column number five, I think what I could reasonably assume would be that the first four calls have already placed their queens and that they have done that in legal places. So I'm not dealing with some invalid state when I have to make my decision, right? All the guys before me made legal choices. So I think I'm gonna say like, you know, precondition is, you know, columns uh, zero, through call minus one 
have legally placed queens in them or something like that, okay? So that's a good start. Um, we said that what each call needs to do is walk through the columns and figure out where to put the queen, right? So how do I do that? Somebody I haven't called on you in front, yeah. There is an available spot, but just put it there. So if there's an available spot, the board has a way we can say if it's safe to put something, but the, the board dot is safe, we have to pass a row and a column. So what row do you want me to pass? The column. The same row, the, the row and the call number are the same? So like if I'm in, uh, if I'm in column four, you want me to try four, four? So what? What do you want me to pass as the, as the row? Yeah, I'm not sure. yeah. Uh, we should loop through the rows. Loop all, all the rows. Okay, try them all. Right, yeah, exactly. That's kind of what backtracking does. I don't know what row is the right row. That's why we're going to exhaustively try every row, but only for the current column that I'm responsible for, that my call is responsible for, right? Okay, so how about for each row? Uh, now, actually, I, I want to look real quick. I'm pretty sure this board thing uses one based numbers. I might be wrong, but let me double check that real quick. Uh, or is it zero based? Did I change it? It used to be one based, and then I would always do it wrong in class. Uh, yeah, let me just make sure. Uh, yeah, okay, it's zero based. Okay, cool. So, um, so let's do row equals zero. Row is less than board dot size. Row plus plus. I could have written less than eight, but like I guess we want it to work for other board sizes and stuff, right? So for each row. What you said was, let's see if it's okay to put a, a queen here. So um, if it would be safe to put a queen at this row and my column, then what? So this is basically my choose, explore, unchoose, right? So choosing is like, let's put a queen here. So board dot, I think it's called place the queen at row call. Explore is the recursion part, solve helper, pass the same board, and what, call, move over the column to the next one, and then unchoose is like, take away that queen, right? Board dot remove, row call. Hmm, okay. Uh, yeah. Try that. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Um, down here, this thing needs to just call the helper, right? So we just need to say uh, solve helper this board, and the column we start with is column zero, right? And I mean, you know, you might have said, oh, could I just add an extra parameter right here or something like that? Oh, whatever, that might be fine. I just, that's a C thing. If it were Java, you'd have to write it as a helper, whatever. So um, yeah, and then up here, I think main needs to be renamed to, they yeah, called it main queen, so okay. Uh, Whoa, oops, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, it says illegal index row zero column eight. So the columns go up through seven. Huh, so how did that happen? Um, yeah? We have no base case. Oh, there's no base case, right. <laughs> uh, oops, yeah, I mean, I knew that, but you know. Um, well, what's a base case? If call is equal to or at least as big as board dot size, then that's a base case. Otherwise, there's more work to do, so I'll do that, that stuff, right? Now again, remember what I said before about what a base case is when a backtracking problem, right? A base case isn't like you asked me to compute the factorial of one and that's easy. It's more like all these other calls came before me. They already did all the work, so I don't need to do much. I just need to do something with all the work that they did. So if I get to this point, um, what does that mean if I get to line 29? What do I know is true if I get here? I have found a solution. How do I know it's valid and I didn't put them in bad places? Say, you ever Yeah, go ahead. Columns, so that means there's the ninth reverse call, and that's bigger than column size. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the one way to think of it is like this precondition. If I get to column a parameter value of eight, which would be the ninth column, I have a precondition that all the prior columns have valid placed queens in them. That means all eight of the columns have valid placed. So it's like I, by my precondition, assuming my code is right, uh, if I get here to line 29, I have found a solution, right? So let's just do, um, let's print it. See out board endl and run it and what do I find? Whoa, cool. So look what it does. It, um, it spits out this is a solution, and also this is a solution, and also it's just printing all the different solutions out. Cool. Um, we could sit here and hand verify them by, by drawing lines and stuff, but uh, I'm afraid. <laughs> or we could not do that. Um, these look right. These look like it's it's working. So I mean, I think this is the guts of it. I think we've basically solved the general uh, problem here. Yeah. Um, so let's say we only want like one board to be output. How would we? Yeah, your, your, your question, could I could show one solution and then stop? That's exactly what I want to do next, so you're, you're, you're on the right track of what I wanted to talk about. But um, uh, so there's, there's good ways and bad ways to do that, right? Like one way would be like, well, uh, exit. <laughs> uh, there's, an, there's, an, <laughs> there's an exit function that just exits your program, stops the program. So uh, there. <laughs> um, I don't like that solution. It's, it's a hack. Um, I don't, it's not just because like some style guide says not to say exit, it's not only that, it's because I might want to print one solution and then have my program do more stuff. My program might not want to shut itself down. Well, okay, well maybe instead of exit, I should just say return. Maybe that'll, so just get out of here, return out of here, right? Maybe that'll fix it. No, you don't believe me. Oops, it didn't fix it. Uh, why didn't that fix it? Yeah? It just, it goes up. A single uh, call, yeah. which it was planning on doing anyway yeah. after the if statement. So exactly. uh, really, like, you did nothing. So uh, I think whenever you see return, you always want to ask, like, where am I returning to? How did I, how did I get here? <laughs> where am I? What am I doing with my life? Um, <laughs> this is like the eighth every... call. Yeah, this is the eighth call or maybe the ninth call, I guess. Um, if I say return, it's going to return to the prior call. If there's like eight or nine of them stacked up and I return out of this one, it's just going to go back to that one. I really am trying to say go all the way back to main or whoever. There's no real command for that. There's no syntax of stop recursion now. I want to get off. That's not how it works. But I mean, we can, we can make it do that. It's, I'm just explaining there's no magic single keyword that will accomplish that. What we need to do instead go is we need to think about like go to no <laughs> quiet. <laughs> um, that's that's black magic. We don't do that here. Um, <laughs> uh, no, no. But if we want to find a solution and then stop, this is actually a really common thing that you want to do in backtracking algorithms. Sometimes not. Sometimes you want to print all the solutions, like I just did. But sometimes you want a single solution. Okay. So a trick for that is. I need to say, okay, at, th at this moment, it, it is valuable, I mean, even though return isn't quite right. This is the moment in the code where I know I have a solution. And it just seems like I should use that moment to somehow tell my recursion to stop doing what it's doing. So in other words, I've got these eight or nine calls stacked up, and the guy up on top needs to give information to the guys underneath him, don't recur anymore. How do function calls give information to the place that they were called from? Yeah? yeah returning. returning things, okay. So how would I, re what would I return? Well, I could return some sort of number indicating whether you should keep going or not. I mean, but it seems like sort of a yes or no. Should you keep going or should you not keep going? Usually you should, but if you find a solution, you shouldn't. If it's yes or no, true or false, it's Boolean, right? So let's make this into a bool function. And let's say what it does here is it, you know, if solution is found, prints it and returns true. And if no solution is found, returns false. Okay? So if I find a solution right here, I will return true. Now again, we said that alone does not like unroll all of these calls, but if the person who called me looks for that true value, they could react to it, right? 
So what else do I need to change here? I mean, just, just what I did won't fix it. Like, I hope you understand it's still, oh, actually it's an error because I don't always return. Like if you say you're returning a bool, you have to always return a bool. So like this path of the code here, like if I try all these different things and I don't find any solutions, maybe I need to return false or something like that. Like I didn't find an answer. So I think if I add that it compiles, but it still does print all the solutions, you know? I need to change it a little bit more. What else do I need to do? Somebody I haven't called. Yes. Um, you could create a Boolean variable and set it equal to the solve helper. So here, you're, you're right. Uh, when I call the solve helper, so just again, remember who's calling whom, who's returning to where. The eighth caller, or I guess it's the ninth call, the one that's doing this, where does that true go back to? It goes back to the previous call. Where in the code is that? That's here. The previous call called me right here, and they're waiting for me. And I, so like previous call here, me right here, I return true back to them here, right? So what you said is great. You said, let's capture what the call is returning to us. Let's say bool result equals that. So now that value tells me whether the next guy found a solution or not. Now what else do I do with that value? Do you want to address that as well? Like what would I do with this Boolean value? So like return result instead of false. Right, so I think that's right. I think I want to make a slight tweak to that because um, suppose that we're going to explore eight possibilities, eight rows, right? And on the third of those, I find that I get a true solution. I don't need to do the other five, right? I don't want to do the other five. So I mean, if I just wrote return result down here, it would return out the true that a solution was found, but I think it would still explore those other solutions, and I want to avoid that. So can you, do you have a way to address that? So right after it, maybe an if statement, if result, then return the So if result is true, return result, stop now. Yeah, um, that's great. And, and I'll tell you, the most common bug students have is they'll say, well, if result is true, return true here. That's fine. But then they'll say, else return false here. Now, of course, that is, is not correct. Um, what's wrong with that way of describing? It's not very elegant, but what's wrong with it functionally? Yeah. <clears throat> then um, for the stop um, in the first call, no matter what. Right. Like, there's up to eight things I might need to try. And this would be like I try the first of the eight. And if that fails, I won't even try the other seven. That's not right. I need to keep trying until I find one that does work. So only if I see a true should I stop early. If I see a false, I shouldn't return anything yet. I should just let the loop keep doing its thing. Okay. So I think some of the subtleties, I might be belaboring this code a little bit, but I think these subtleties are important because I only want to stop early if I find an answer. If result is true, then stop. If I get through all eight of these and I never do this, that means that all eight of my branches were unsuccessful. That means I should return false. So I think this version of the program prints the one board. If you want a variation to scratch your head about a little bit, could I pass in an int for how many solutions to print? What if I want to print the first three solutions I find and then stop? How would you do that? Think about it. Variation of this technique you could think about. Anyway, but this idea of like print one solution versus print them all, you often have this sort of pattern. Boolean, if I found the answer, stop. Okay, questions about eight queens? Or n queens, yeah? yeah? So I was wondering, what if, um, if we found one, then we don't uh, backtrack? Oh, if you found a solution, you don't unplace the queens. Yeah. That's true, I guess. I'm okay with that because I'm sort of leaving the board in its like solved state. And so what I could actually do is I could just not even print the board. So like if I just take that away, the recursion doesn't print it, but it puts the board into a solved state. And now out in like main, I could say solve queens and then I could say print board or not. And I think that the board I printed would have the solution in it. So now it's left that way. Maybe I want to do that. I don't know. You could certainly argue that maybe I want to print it here and then I want to unplace all the queens here as I'm exiting out to put the board back to an empty state. You could do that. That'd be fine. I see. But what if uh, the anxious one? So that, that one gives, gives us, like, if right now it's like we go through the end and then we backtrack and try some other choices. But what if 
what if, uh, if we return true, we never do this? Well, I'm not sure if I'm understanding your question properly. I mean, basically, if we ever find that this exploration works, we don't unchoose any of that because we like what we found and we want to leave it there. Yeah, yeah. But if we don't like what we found, we immediately undo it and then try something else. So exactly. I think this solution, if it finds a solution, will leave the queens there. And if we don't find a solution, all the calls will undo their work and we'll be left with an empty board by the end if we never find a solution. So if you didn't want that, you'd have to make changes to the code to address that. Like if you wanted to undo the queens, even if you found a solution, you could put a line right here that said remove row call, or I guess you could cut this and paste it between lines 41 and 42 or something like that. That would be fine too. Sure, neither one of those is right or wrong. It depends on what the problem specification says. Yeah? Is there any nice way to mathematically <coughs> the number of calls you're going to need to make so that you find all the correct Oh, a mathematical, like how many calls you're going to need? Well, I mean, you know, you could do combinatorics on each call does this a forking of eight and you can start doing the math on multiplications on that. But I think the thing is like, the avoiding calls of like, well, it isn't safe here, that prunes a lot of calls out of the tree. You could remove that if statement actually, but then your code would be exploring all these dumb calls trees that it didn't need to explore. So I think that optimization aspect is really important. And if you want, I can put a int up here and count the calls. I think I'm not gonna do it if you don't mind just for the clock purposes, but I think it would be interesting to edit this file later, make a global ugly variable of call counts, run it, Try turning on and off various optimizations and just watch the count of all those calls going up and down. Um, I want to show you just in terms of visualizing this, there is a method called uh, set delay where every time you place a queen, it'll pause just for a second and it'll print the board so you can kind of watch the algorithm. And I think it's kind of fun to watch. So here's our code. It's doing the exact same calculation, except every time we place a queen, the board is internally printing itself. That's why we're seeing this. And what I think is really interesting to watch is like the queens that are further to the left, they move less frequently. Like you're constantly twiddling around the ones on the, on the right more over here. And if you just think about it, that's because, oh, we found it, so that's the solution. But anyway, do you see what I'm saying? Like the farther left you are, the longer you're gonna stay put because you have to explore all these things after you before you come back and move to the next one. Versus farther to the right, not that much stuff follows you. So you have a quicker exploration before you either find a solution or give up and go back. Yeah. Oh, why isn't it the one on the slide? The one here? solution that has a first queen here would be found before any solution that has a first queen here and so on. Um, and so like, well, why isn't this guy up higher or something? I mean, I think, it, isn't it true that we, we can't solve it with him here or her here and also her here? I, I guess, I think it's probably true if you sat down and looked at it enough. I think what you find is there's no solution with this queen here and with another queen here, 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 or here. It, like if you're locked in at this one, this first one you can use that'll work for the second one. I haven't sat there and tracked that, but I, I, just, I believe due to the nature of how we search that that must be so, you know? Yeah. Okay, anyway, that's the eight queens problem, n queens problem. If you wanna see n queens for a different n, you can try something like, you know, size of five or whatever and see some size boards don't have any solutions. Uh, well, there's <laughs> five does, <laughs> but I mean, you could try different size chess boards and see if it works, kind of fun. I like that one. Uh, you're gonna do a, a, a problem on homework four called Boggle, where you search for words on a, on a two-dimensional board, and there's definitely this aspect of like, if you can find a way to make a word by connecting letters on this grid, you wanna return that or whatever, and you, you wanna <laughs> stop when you find a path, and so this kind of style of coding, find a solution with recursion, if you see it, get out of the recursion. This code is a good reference for that. So um, anyway, okay, what else? Let's move forward. So let's see, I wanna do, I wanna do this domino problem, but actually I really wanted to get to this travel problem. So I wanna see if I come back to this domino problem real quick. Um, so I've been wanting to do this for a couple lectures now and it's been in my slides, but I haven't gotten to it. So this one is uh, find a way to travel, all the ways to travel to a given point. Um, so this is like, 
you know, we start at zero, zero, and we want to draw and find all the ways to get to a certain x, y position. So this is kind of one of these exhaustive dump out all the solutions kind of problems. And the, the only three moves you can make are to go north, east, or northeast. Now actually it's flipped, so north is down because the coordinates are dumb and computers, but whatever. Um, so like if you want to travel from zero, zero to two, one, you can either go diagonally and then right, or you can go, you know, this is a, this is a partial uh, in progress, or you could go down and then over, or you could go over and then down. So you want to kind of like print or try all the different ways that you could do that, okay? Does it make sense what we're asking for? Given those three ways that you can move, print all the ways that'll get you to a certain place. And of course, what, what's important about these three moves is that you can't go backwards. You can't go down and then up, or right and then left. You can't, you can't go back. So that's the idea. So I have a file here called travel.cpp. Let me rename main to main queen or whatever. And then travel, I have a main in here. And we need to write this. Now, I'm taking a parameter called g point, and I haven't talked about that at all. It's just a really dumb little object that has a get x and get y or something. It's easy. So um, I'm implicitly traveling from 0, 0 to there. So how to do it? I can go east, north, or northeast. You want to tell, tell me about base cases, maybe? Or like, what do you say? Yeah, go ahead. OK, sure. There's different ways you could do this. I think <coughs> your solution, I think, is fine. Let's start there. You said, let's write a helper that tells us where we are and where the target is. Because we start out at 0, 0, but as we make these recursive calls, we're going to move from there. So another way would be to sort of diminish the target down towards 0. But I think what you're saying will be better for what I want to do, which is to draw animation of this. So uh, you're saying make like void travel helper that takes this point target. And it takes a G point of like where I am, like me, <laughs> where, where my location is. So I'm going to call like travel helper. And I'm going to pass target. And my location is uh, like G point origin. 0, 0, and I'm going to pass origin or something like that, right? Okay, cool. Good start. Good talk. Um, next, what else? Base case is going to be when target and the same. Yeah, base case. I mean, a lot of times with recursion, you want to think about base case. So, okay, easy base case is if target equals me. <laughs> it sounds like we're playing it's some kind of uh, assassination attempt or something. Um, <laughs> if the target's me, then I'm done. Uh, now, what's the goal of this stupid function? It's supposed to print all of these paths. So at this point, in theory, I would like print something, I guess. But what am I going to print? I need to print how I got to the target. How do I know how I got to the target? Take back to a few points in your previous locations. OK, sure. Let's keep track. I mean, in all these problems, when we're searching exhaustively or backtracking, we need to keep track of the choices that we've made somehow and pass them from call to call. Um, either a vector of choices or a string. I, the format here is just separated by spaces, but I think it'll be fine to keep it as a vector too. So, so something like, um, like vector of um, maybe strings, because I'm printing east and north. I'm not printing the coordinates themselves. So like a vector of string of the chosen things that I've chosen. So maybe I'll say chosen. And then here, I'll pass. Uh, Vector string reference chosen. Uh, okay. Would it also be a G point reference? Uh, oh, is it a, a, a G point reference? Oh, like here, me. Um, the reason I did that was because like me might be changing on each call. Like we could we could explore that too. But I mean, basically, I need to see out my chosen when I get to this base case, right? Yeah, go ahead. We could just use a string or a stream or something like that. Yeah, I mean, for this problem, I don't care too much if the output matches that exactly. I could have the little curly braces and stuff. I think it's fine. I just want to make sure that I'm printing the right sequence of like directions. Um, if you want it with no brackets, I think you could pass a string and concatenate an E or something onto the string. I just, whatever, either of those could be fine. Um, if I'm not the target, what do I do? Take a step. Go one step closer to the target. OK. Recursive case. 
take a step toward the target. Um, so I said you could go east or north or northeast, right? Like, what, what should I actually do here? Yeah, go ahead. You should also check to see if you're not, like, further east or further north than the point is. So don't go too far. Like, if I walk past it, I can't go back. Okay, so maybe something like if the t if, if my get x is less than or equal to the target's get x, and my y is less than or equal to the target's y. Is that kind of what you have in mind? Something like that? OK, then if, if I haven't gone too far, then do some recursion. Yeah, go ahead. Um, to trial task, you have a nested for loop. Going from 0 to 1 represents the change in both the x position and the y position. Oh, uh, to, to do the, the different variations of x and y modified by 1. Yeah, I tell you what, I, I don't want to be too clever here. I'm fine with just writing out the three cases rather than trying to come up with some loop. I'm okay with just writing the code for east and then writing the code for north and then writing the code for northeast, all three separate. If it's super ugly and redundant, we could maybe try to fix it or whatever, but I'm okay. Like, I kind of want to compare this one to that sublist problem where you don't always, always need a loop. You know, I think, I think my, one of my goals with this problem is to show you that sometimes not having a loop is okay. Like, if there's only a couple cases and it's easy to enumerate them, you don't always have to make it a for loop. Um, so I kind of want to say, like, try going east, try going north, and then try going northeast. And again, when I say try, that would sort of be like choose, explore, unchoose, east, unchoose, unchoose, east, and then north, and then northeast, right? So how do I choose east? Well, East is going to be my position plus one to the x to the right, right? So maybe something like g point east is my x plus one and my y. And then north is my x plus nothing and my y plus one. And northeast is add one to both of them, right? So then I'm going to do, I have to choose that. So I have to like do chosen dot add east to the end. I have to explore by calling myself travel helper, oops, travel helper target. I am now not me anymore. I'm the east person, right? And this same chosen vector. And then unchoose is chosen dot remove chosen dot size minus one, right? Now you might be making the case for your loop here, but I mean, look, I just want to write these cases out first. So do it again, but with north, right? North, north, and then add northeast, go northeast, remove northeast, right? Okay. So if you were going to make a loop here, you know, I think you had some cleverness involving the zeros and the ones and the deltas and stuff like that. I would be okay with something like the following. Declare these three points, east, north, northeast. And then you could just like put those into a little vector and then for each of them you could do choose, explore, unchoose. You could do something like that. Maybe we'll come back to it. I wanna, I wanna try to get something that sort of works before I clean up too much, right? So do we like that? Well, let's, let's see, what does it do? Oops, no matching function for, oh, this is a vector of strings, actually, isn't it? It's not a vector of uh, points, g points. So I'm supposed to add east, <laughs> and I'm supposed to add the string north, and here I'm supposed to add the string northeast. Okay, whatever. Um, target x, let's do four and three. Whoa, look at all that. So does that look right? In, in terms of not necessarily matching character for character, the output on the slide, but just like, are those moves that seem to lead us to that place? I think they are. Yeah. Okay, so like that's kind of the guts of how to do this. I wanted to talk though, because you might say, well, but I mean, I don't know, is this a backtracking problem? We're kind of just yeah. dumping all of them out. I mean, you know, th some of these problems, we're just dumping all the, the answers out. Now, um, we do a little bit of backtracking by like unchoosing these, but I wanted to talk about like, what if we wanted to like draw the, because we, we saw the eight queens, we saw it kind of trying all the stuff. What if we wanted to like watch this algorithm run? So like what if we wanted to watch it try all the little lines, you know, as it, as it went along? OK? 
Okay. So how do we do that? Well, um, so what could we do? We could pass along a way to draw on the window. Like we could pass the window around. We've been doing that on your homework three, your fractals and stuff. You pass around a window. So what if I come back here? See, this all happens on a G window. So what if down here I say um, travel on this G window, G dub, and then here my helper also takes G dub, and then up here my helper takes G dub, and here G dub, and then here when I call it I say G dub. So like now I have the window if I want to talk to him. So. Maybe I could have this recursion like draw lines as it goes, kind of, you know? So I just want to talk about what kind of changes you might make to the code in order to accomplish that. I guess, I see these yellow lines, I have to fix that in a second, but I guess I could say like draw a line to the north, east, from me to east or from me to the north. I, I could do that. I could do that. I had something slightly different in mind, which was like, maybe I could add another parameter, which is like the previous point or how I got to here. And then it would be like from the previous to me, I would draw a line. That might help me avoid drawing three lines, one for east, one for north, one for northeast. Maybe I could draw a line from whoever came before me to me, something like that. So what if we explore that for a second? Uh, first of all, before I forget, I got to say G dub here. I got to say G dub. I got to say G dub. There we go. Um, what if I passed a previous point, like um, instead of just me, I passed like prev and I passed me. So now prev, you don't really have a prev at the start, so maybe I'll just pass origin twice or something. There's not really a valid value for that, but um, okay. If you're gonna pass prev and me, then what do I pass to these calls down here? like? East is me now. Who's East's prev? Me. me. <laughs> yeah. uh, when will then be now? Soon. You guys probably haven't seen space balls. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> wait, me. 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 So I'm the prev of these three guys, right? Uh, yeah, go ahead. So why are you drawing a line from prev to me instead of drawing a line from me to E? I could draw a line from me to E and from me to north and from me to northeast. I guess the way I thought of it was maybe I wouldn't have to write the code three times if I just drew it from prev to me. So something like up here, I could say g dub dot draw line from prev dot get x, prev dot get y, me dot get x, me dot get y, something like that, right? Now, um, if I want to do, okay, let, let, me, let me try to run that. Let me just see if that, if that accomplishes anything. I only have a minute or two left. Oh, gdub not declared. Uh, oh, do I not have, oh, it's called graphical. Sorry, I'm supposed to call graphical target x target y. Probably run out of time. So then here I call travel gdub uh, target, wait, g point, target, target x, target y. And then I call g, to, okay, let me try that. Uh, four, three. Now, <laughs> it's drawing these teensy tiny little lines <laughs> because it's drawing them from spots that are one pixel apart, you know? I think I'm not gonna have time to finish it. So, okay. I know, I know, I know. I, I'm like one of those bad uh, Netflix shows that are trying to get you to click on the next episode here. So, look, a couple things. One thing I could do is I could multiply these lines, the X and Ys, by like 50 so that the lines look bigger. I could do that. But another thing I wanted to show you but I won't have time for is like if I want to show the algorithm, I should really be putting lines on the screen and then if I backtrack, I should be removing the lines from the screen. So the solution that's in the slide does that with different colors and stuff. So you can take a look at that if you want. Anyway, I got to let you go. Please have a good weekend and get started on homework four and I'll uh, see you guys on Monday. Thanks. <laughs>